Yuhan here, and I want to talk about hip mobility and the deep hip muscle self mobilization techniques that we're going to employ and where. And so I want to start with just a quick look at the anatomy and then where we're going to try to impart our mobilizing force in the area of the hip to improve running motions. And so the first thing that we can see is just an overview of the posterior pelvis and the muscles of the hip. If we look on the left side, you see the big most external muscles. So our glute max is the big muscle here. You've got a lot of um, connective tissue that makes up the IT band coming down here. And then you have this muscle, which we'll get after a little bit later, this tensor fascia latte muscle. Those are the most external. As you can see, they all roll into a part of the femur called the greater trochanter right there. If we peel these away, here's the next layer down. Gluteus medius, piriformis, then getting into these other deep rotators, which includes piriformis, the gemellus muscles, quadratus femoris, obturator internus. All of these impart a rotational force to the hip and are very small and can be very tight pesky muscles located deep within the glutes themselves adjacent the hip. So that is primarily where we want to go and this can be a very challenging place to improve mobility with standard stretching. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use massage balls and pinpoint pressure to address these muscle groups or in general this area surrounding the hip which is back here and um, that is covered with this musculature that when these all get tight can really compress that hip ball and socket and so if we even take another look past that and look at what the hip joint itself looks like here is on the left here is the front of a left hip. This is the front of the pelvis, zoomed in, showing just the ligaments that hold the ball in the socket right here. This is the back of a right hip and pelvis. So all those rotators we we're just looking at stripped away now, and all you've got is the ball in the socket. And so you can imagine then these muscles coming across, and they're all sort of at different angles fanning across the pelvis to the femur holding that ball in the socket controlling that ball in the socket but can also really compress that so we want to have mobility in this whole area so let's go back to this group so we talk our first strategy is going to be trying to import um, impart forces on all of these muscles to improve this motion if we go to this next view this is our side view now so the side view of a right hip. This is the actual ball. This is what's called the greater trochanter, the side handle. This is a, the glute med, I de, um, just isolated for view. But you have all these other muscles overlying it. You have the tensor fascia latte muscle, which goes into the front. You have the piriformis and some of the other rotators in the side. So the first technique we're going to use is by putting a ball right here of some kind. It can be tennis ball, um, any sort of um, like a lacrosse ball, sports ball, like a softball, baseball, or more um, specialized massage balls and imparting a force, either a pinpoint force, longitudinal rolling with the fibers, or even doing cross-fiction pressure to this group. And in particular, what we want to do, the muscles live around this ball. And so we talk about this idea of doing this sort of horseshoe technique of going and covering the soft tissue around the ball. We don't want to be hammering on that bony side handle, but the soft tissue around it. Now, if we peel even more layers away, here are the deep rotators. You and um, the deepest layer of muscles. I may not get all of these right, but this is glute min, piriformis, the gemellus muscles here, obturator internus here, and um, quadratus femoris, I believe. Um, they are all rotators, deep rotators that can get really stiff. 
And so our next strategy will be to be laying down. We're going to try to put the ball and find this trough between the greater trochanter and the rest of the pelvis, sort of the meat of the glutes. There's this little trough right here. It's sort of where the dimple can be found. If we can put a ball there and put moderate pressure, we can exact some um, mobilizing force to these deep rotators. So if we now zoom out and kind of look at the external view, again, we talk about that horseshoe strategy. So doing working muscles on the sort of front part of the horseshoe, especially the TFL. TFL is a big culprit in overuse in runners, especially in ultra runners. Um, it tries to help out with hip flexion and abduction. And if this gets tight, it sucks that ball tighter into the socket. So massaging TFL on the front side, then you go to glute med, glute max, and then onto the back side for aspects of glute max, glute med, and those deep rotators. So those are the areas that we're gonna work on. Let's look at one more area, and it is the adductors. So the adductors are, are the flip side of this system, of the side door system. So we just did all of the AB ductors and the rotators on the outside. We are now looking at the front of the pelvis. Here are the adductors, and you can see we have a variety of adductor fibers. You have adductor brevis, you have fibers of adductor magnus, which is this strong kind of webbed-like muscle. And you can see all of them can exert a force where it really sucks the um, ball into the socket, which is important for our stability while we're out there running, and um, especially out on the trails. But again, if this group gets overtly tight, it's gonna suck that in there too tight, and it's gonna prevent the cardinal motion, the flexion of this big bone and the extension of this big bone. So we're going to mobilize this group as well. I like to use a foam roller for this one a little bit more, but you can also use um, softer massage balls. So that represents the side door tissue mobility approach to restore hip motion you're at working on the lateral hip, front, middle, and back, and then the medial hip and thigh at the adductors.